Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Adobe updated Lightroom Classic 2 version 13. That is a whole number update. That usually means something new has been added to the application. In this video, I'm going to go over everything that's new and exciting in this, the latest version, version 13 of Adobe Lightroom Classic. Before I begin, I do want to mention that I was fortunate enough to have received a pre-release version of the app from Adobe. I'm doing this video using that pre-release version before the actual version is released. With that said, I won't be posting this video though until after the official version is released. When you're at home using the actual official version of Lightroom, be aware that it may look or behave a bit differently than the pre-release version I'm using in this video. Now, there have been a number of new things added in this version of Lightroom. Most of them are minor, and I'm going to save them for another video. In this video, I want to talk about what I think are three major new additions to this version of Lightroom. I'm going to demo two of them, and one I'm going to give you more of an overview because I'm not really up to speed on it yet. Now, the first new thing that I want to demo that I think is rather prominent is something called lens blur. If you have an image such as this with a strong subject, the couple, and you don't like how the background is blurred, you could use Lens Blur to blur out the background. Now, to get to Lens Blur, go to the Develop Module Lightroom and click on the Lens Blur tab on the right-hand side. Now, you can see that mine says Early Access. That's probably because I'm using this pre-release version. If you want to apply Lens Blur, just click the little check mark, and uh, Lightroom will examine the image, find the subject, and blur the background. And let me give you a before after. There's before. There's after, there's before, and there's after. Now by default, it will give you a blur amount of 50. You can move that to the right and blur it out even more, or move it to the left to blur it out less. Let's blur it out quite a bit because it allows me to better show you what bokeh does. Now you have total control of over what the bokeh looks like. Now it's easiest to see this on an image that has pointed light sources in the area that's blurred out, such as this image does. You can see by default, we'll have this first bokeh look. It's kind of like the pointed light sources are kind of like saucers or just dinner plates. If I go to the one to the right of that, you'll see it kind of hollows out the middle of those circles. If you go to the next one, you can see it gives a kind of a hex look, hexagonal shape. If you go to the next one, you see we'll have more rings. See that ring? And this last one gives us more of a football shape. You can see that some of these pointed light sources are shaped like footballs. Now let's go to the ring one because that just makes it easiest for me to show you what boost does. If you take boost to the right, it will just make the bokeh brighter parts brighter. Move it to the left, it makes it dimmer. So you can see how some of those football shapes up there are getting brighter when I move that to the right and dimmer to the left. So that's that. Kind of like this bokeh. So I'm going to stay with that one. Now, when Lightroom examined the image, it found the subject, it put the area around the subject in focus, a little bit behind it in focus, then it started dropping off into blur, and the whole foreground's in focus in this case. You actually could control where that focus point is by taking this entire box and moving it to the right. You can see how I'm pushing focus back. So now when I'm in the extreme right, the background is in focus and the foreground is out of focus. Now there are limits. Those are either sides of the boxes. So we have like a focal range right in here that's in focus. If I want to widen it, I can move this to the right and you can see how it's pushing some of that background in focus as I move that to the right. Put it back around where it was. If I go to this side, you can see how it's going to restrict it to the point where it's so thin sliver, it's even making the people out of focus. So you could control that. Now it's maybe difficult for you to see where the focus is. You could visualize the depth with this checkbox. When you do that, you'll get a color overlay. The warmer tones are in focus and the cooler tones are out of focus. And where it is black and white, it's totally out of focus. So you could help visualize um, those areas. Now, if you roll open refine here, just click that little triangle, you could see that you have the option to use a brush, actually one of two brushes. You could take a brush and add blur to an area, or you could take a brush and add focus to an area. Now, in this case, let's just say I want the foreground to be blurry. So I would get the blur brush. You have the amount to blur with this slider. 
you have the size of the brush with this slider and all the ways to resize a brush in Lightroom work here, you know, the bracket keys and your mouse and so on. You have feathering and flow and auto mask if you prefer. Now I'm just going to get a bit of a smaller brush. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go across the bottom and blur out the bottom. You can see how I'm adding blur. I get to readjust the amount with this slider. So you could use a brush to either brush and blur or brush and focus as you uh, see fit. So that is lens blur. Now it's not something I think I'd use a lot, but I think I might use it now and then. What I'm really excited though, uh, what I'm really excited for though, is the next new feature. Now in the past in Lightroom, in the right hand panel of the develop module, you had a tab that was HSL color. You'll notice that tab is gone. It's been replaced with color mixer. All of the controls that were in HSL color are in color mixer. So we're not missing anything. They just added to it. Let me open it up and you can see that they added point color. That is what is new. Now I mentioned HSL and color are still here. They're in the mixer side and you can see I'm in this drop down in HSL. I have view, saturation, luminance, all the controls. I have targeted adjustment tool. If I wanted to do a targeted adjustment, everything is there for the HSL panel that was there previously. If I go to the drop down and change it to color, see everything that was previously there on the color section is here as well. So nothing has been removed. It's all here. What is new is point color. It's, in my opinion, a better way to get a targeted adjustment. In the past, you would go to HSL, you'd get the targeted adjustment tool, and then click and drag up or down on a color, and it would adjust the appropriate sliders for that color. But you really didn't have a lot of control over the range of color that it was affecting. You have that control with point color. To use point color, grab the eyedropper and click on a color, in this case, the blue sky. It will give you a swatch of that color that you clicked on. Below the swatch and slider, you'll see U shift, saturation shift, and luminance the shift. So I could make the sky darker and more saturated. Now, if I want to affect the brighter parts of the grasses, I'll grab the eyedropper again. You can see I have this magnifier with the uh, cursor so I could better see where I'm clicking. I'll click on this brighter green and I'll come in and I'll shift that brighter. I'm going to get the eyedropper again. I'm going to come in on a darker green. Find one like right in there. And then I'm going to make that darker. Now, I mentioned that you could change the range. First of all, you could visualize the range by clicking on visualize range and you could see that in this case, anything that is not being affected will be black and white, and anything that will be affected is in color. The more it will be affected, the more saturated it will be. Uh, the less it will be affected, the less saturated it will be. Now, if I go to the range slider, you can see how this, first of all, for this darker green, it's only affecting the darker greens. You can see how the brighter greens, or their yellows, technically, I guess, um, they're kind of black and white here, so they're not being affected. But if I take this slider and start moving it around, you can see how I could like restrict it, remove it from some other areas or add it to more areas. You can see how it's kind of increasing the saturation. You could roll this open and be a little more specific about it. If you just want to affect the specific hues, move this, see how it's affecting more of the grass. If I move it to left, less that way, this one and this one, see how you could affect kind of better dial in what you're affecting. And this is what you couldn't do with targeted adjustments with the HSL color tab that was here previously. Now, if I don't like the swatch, I just want to get rid of it. I could just like right click on it and delete that swatch. You noticed if I right click, I could delete all the swatches as well. I want to come in and I want to actually, first of all, I want to close this up. There we go. And we'll come in here and get this darker green again. And we're going to make that darker. We'll go back to the lighter green and I'll make that even lighter. It's just overdoing it. And we'll go to the blue and I'll make that even darker, let's say. So you could see how you could click between the swatches to affect those. Now, finally, if you go to this little triangle and roll that open, you'll notice there's another way you could adjust these. You could affect the luminance with this right side by pulling this up or down. And you could affect the hue and saturation with this side by moving it around. You see how it affects the appropriate sliders. If I move it just straight up and down, it's adjusting saturation. If I move it left or right, it's adjusting the hue. 
and this was luminance. See how it's moving the luminance slider? So that's just another way you could do it if you want to do it that way instead of using the sliders themselves down here. So that is point color, and it's in the new color mixer tab in Lightroom Classic. All right, this next new feature, I admit I am not totally up to speed yet. I promise in the very near future, I'll be doing a video where I'll be covering it fully. In today's video, I'll just give you a quick overview. This new feature is support for HDR output. There are a lot of HDR monitors available nowadays, and in the past, in Lightroom, you only were able to edit for output to SDR monitors. Well, now you could edit for output to HDR monitors, even if you have an SDR monitor that you're working on. Now, to get to this new feature, you would go up to the Basic tab, and you'll notice at the top where it used to say Treatment, and it had color and black and white, it now just has an Auto button, which was moved from lower down lower. It has a black and white button and an HDR button missing that color button and you may be thinking well what if I convert this to black and white like I just did and I want to go back to color in the past you would just click on the word color it had the word color there not a button well if you want to go back to the color treatment just click on black and white again and you'll turn that off same thing for HDR we're going to edit for output to an HDR monitor so we'll just click there to turn this on now you'll notice the image changed slightly. Let me turn it off, go back to color treatment. Look at the image, look at the cloud specifically, and let me turn it on. You can see that they got brighter. HDR displays have a lot more headroom above uh, the absolute white of an SDR display. And they have actually a little more headroom also on the other end as well, below absolute black of an SDR display. So. What you would do is you would go to this HDR mode. Now, if you have a full HDR monitor, you can just start editing. You don't have to worry about anything. But if your monitor isn't full HDR or if you're using an SDR monitor, you want to do one of two things. You want to come down here and either check this box, visualize HDR, and you'll see some colors appear. You can see there's kind of a cyan color. There's kind of a purple color. Those are stops above SDR white. Uh, so I know it's kind of confusing. If I come in and I move the whites up, you see a lot more colors appear. That's a lot more stop above SDR white. Now, a better way to probably see this is go up to the histogram with this on and hover over this left side right here. And you'll notice that that says it's zero to one stop above SDR white. This next one is one to two stops above SDR white. And you can see that the colors that apply to those areas are being sh shown. Go to the next one, it changes. Now we have different colors showing. Those are two to three stops above SDR white. And then finally at the very end, we have three or more stops above SDR white. Go to the far left, that's just SDR, st standard dynamic range. So what you could do is you could turn that on and then you could come in and adjust this appropriately. If you have two colors, that means you're at least two stops above SDR white. You start to see a third color, you're three. Start to see a fourth, you're four or more stops above SDR white. So if you know that the monitor you're adjusting for is only partial HDR, you'll see the colors appropriate, you know, the appropriate colors, and you could adjust uh, these sliders so you could have it best viewed on that HDR monitor. Now, another way to visualize this is with clipping indicators. Turn that off and just hit the J key on your keyboard and you'll get clipping indicators. And in the past, if you have an SDR image, you just have blue and red. Well, because this is an HDR image, you'll have blue for the shadows, but you'll have multiple colors for the highlights. So again, I come in and turn whites up. You can see all these other colors coming in here. So I could come in and bring this back so it's not clipping for this specific monitor I happen to be on. Uh, of course, this would be different for different monitors. Uh, the colors would change. If it was full HDR, I, I think my iMac is just partial HDR. Um, if it was full HDR, you probably wouldn't see any colors because you'd be seeing it all. But okay, so you did all these adjustments in HDR. You visualized it either with this check mark or you used the clipping indicators. I'll turn those off, by the way, by hitting the J key again. So you have it adjusted. You think it would look good on an HDR monitor. Well, what if someone looks at an SDR monitor? What will it look like? Well, you could preview that here. Click here and you'll get the look. Now these are already adjusted. I could reset them holding the option key. I could just then click right here and reset it. And then I could come in and adjust this for an SDR display. Of 
like something like that, all right? And then turn it off, and now we're back to the HDR display, SDR display. So you could get an idea what it will look like. Now, again, I'm not totally up to speed on this new feature, this HDR feature. I do know that if you're messing around with it and you just want to go back to the normal color treatment, just click on HDR again, and we're back where we started uh, with the normal color treatment. So that's uh, three of the more prominent new features in this version of Lightroom Classic. I'll be doing two more videos. Uh, one video, I'll cover some of the minor features that include some developed preset updates and some catalog things. Um, I'll talk about that in a new video. And I'll also do that video where I'll cover the HDR feature in more detail. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.